Uh, the, this is Superboy 64, and it came out for the Nintendo 64. This is the conclusion to the big Hyper Time Multiverse Evil Superboy story arc by Callum Kessel and Wallace Gromit. And we have got Evil Superboy there. He's been evil and he's like fighting off loads of Superboys. Uh, there's our main Superboy. Uh, there's classic Superboy, the League of a Superman one. Underneath him, there is Cosmo the Cat. And most of the rest of these Superboys we have seen earlier in this story. Like the Superboy who is also Robert or the girl one. Uh, although that one there... That is Superboy 1 million. He was crossed with Big Mac. I'll make note of that. And that can be the next one we look at. The one with that version of Superboy. We start off and all the Doomsday Mans. They have broken out of confinement. And then evil Superboy. He deals with them by just wishing them all away. And that definitely does not reinforce every single point. I had to say about Doomsday Man in the last two Superboy videos. So Superboy and the Champions of the Unknown, they have found where all the other captured Superboys are. They're being held in these like life pod things and it's explained why Evil Superboy is collecting all these Superboys but never acknowledged why he also grabbed Cosmo. Probably because she's a cute little kitten. Aw, who's a good little girl? You are. Aw, so cute. And the champions, they really do come across as third wheels in this. But at least she is a very attractive third wheel. Oh, I'd like to change her tyre treads. But Superboy and the champions... They can't work out how to free all the other Superboys and Cosmo. They can't free them to help them fight against evil Superboy. And the rest of the issue is the long anticipated big final fight with evil Superboy. For which the champions do virtually nothing. Classic Superboy. He breaks out of his prison to help out. And then on the next page, all the other Superboys do... And we just get this really fun fight with all these super boys. Meanwhile, struggling to find summit for the champions today, Callum Kessel has them fight evil super boys foot soldiers. And then the main champion, he gets to talk to Metroid from the Eternals. Uh, the super boy fight is great though. Uh, but other than the main Superboy and maybe the classic Superboy and Cosmo, we didn't get to see the others do all that much. They kind of just float around and occasionally hit them in the background. Uh, although later on, at least one other Superboy does do something and I will point it out. So Metroid, he is just observing stuff. That is what he does. That is like his superpower observing things and not doing anything and the champion man he argues logic with metroid and he convinces metroid to intervene and stop evil superboy's evil plans then we have got our bit where superboy the main superboy he defeats evil superman with logic and words and this is great as even though we have got loads and loads of superboys in this story the main Superboy definitely is standing out as, uh, well, the main Superboy. Uh, then we have got an advert, which you've got to turn sideways to see, and I love doing that. And it's for a chocolate bar we didn't have over here, so wasted me time turning it. Then all the Superboys, they use their telekinetic powers to force evil Superboy down onto the floor and hold him down. And actually, I think I've missed the bit where Cowboy Superman does stuff because, uh, hang on, uh, let's see, where is it? Uh, there, he, he ropes up some, uh, some baddies. On the next page, though, all the Superboys, they are returned to their proper place by Metroid. And evil Superboy, he uses this as a chance to beat up Superboy. But it's okay because Metroid, he defeats evil Superboy with a fucker box. 
And then Superboy, he pleads for evil Superboy's life. He says he'll take evil Superboy back to the DC universe with him and make sure that he is in prison and he's never a threat again. So Superboy and the champions, they return to Earth and there is a hyperstorm or whatever with that energy that removes you from existence in every reality. And here is my other complaint because, uh, well, evil Superboy, he uses the storm as a chance to try and stage an escape, which is good because we have him and Superboy have one more fight. But then one of the champions is hit by the energy and he is presumably removed from existence. And then on the next page, evil Superboy is also hit by it. But in this issue, it doesn't have the same effect that we established it at last issue. Last issue, when Paul Hollywood hit it, every version of Paul Hollywood in the multiverse ceased to exist. They disappeared and vanished. But here, it only seems to affect whoever it directly touches. So what was the point of that all sequence last issue with all the Paul Hollywoods? Superboy, he is fine, but... He should have been removed from existence by it when it hit evil Superboy. Now you could make an argument that the other Superboys, the other Superboys, they weren't affected because uh, their origins didn't match. They weren't, or most of them weren't, clones of Superman. But Superboy here and evil Superboy explicitly, they had the same origin. But anyway, it's just a neat, tidy way to get rid of evil Superboy. And who cares if it contradicts what you said last issue, because now the big story is over. Project Pegasus, they decide that Superboy has been missing in action for so long that they need to replace him as their superhero agent. And the next issue, it's them searching for a replacement. And there is you two drinking milk. I want it that way, fellas. It's a fun story and it's got loads of fun set pieces and sequences, but there are tiny little holes in the story or things that slightly annoy us and temporarily suspend my enjoyment. But I'm still giving it a seven thumbs up. And it says no tall pants there, which is a hint for my next video.